Hey kids, welcome to lesson 15, processing arrays, counting occurrences of a value. Instead of displaying a true false value for every item on the list, let's compute one value and display it. A common thing to want to do is count the number of times a value occurs. We can do this with a very small change to the code we've already got. We have to do this. The starter code is similar to past levels. We've also created a variable five count. Add an if statement inside the for loop to increment five count if the value is equal to five. Notice, this will be exactly the same as the if statement you wrote in the previous level, just giving you more practice. That's a pretty big hint that we're going to redo what we did in the last lesson. Run and rerun your code to make sure that it is accurately counting the number of fives in the array. Since the array is getting a random set of values every time you run your program, you might not have to run it a bunch of times to thoroughly test it. Make sure you get to run it at least once when no fives appear in the array. Finally, if you'd like to, change the first loop in a program to add 100 items to the array instead of 10. Your code should still work to count the number of fives no matter how big the original array is. That sounds like a lot of fun, actually. We also have a little message here saying this is going to be part of a much larger lesson. That means we should definitely get this right moving forward so the rest of the lessons don't get messed up. Let's go ahead and take a look at our code. We have test array. It is currently empty. And what it's saying is you're going to run 10 times. And what are you going to run 10 times? It's going to run append item. That means it's going to add an item to the array at the end. What array? Test array, the one we just created there. It's going to create a random number between 0 and 10. It's going to print out in our debug console the original and the numbers right there. We want to make a variable to count to fives. This is the variable they provided saying five count. Our variable is currently set to zero. We have a processed array. For every time there is an item in the array, we're going to do something. And it says your code here. So that something is something we have to actually write. Then it's going to display again in our debug console number of fives, the new variable count fives, the updated one. What we're really worried about here is our little area right there. And up here, what we have to do is we have to add an if statement inside there that is going to look for the number of fives. This sounds like a lot like a couple of lessons we've done before, where when something happens, we have to add it to our variable to see. If we remember our coin flipping exercises, every time we got heads, we added to something. And all we did there was just did num heads plus plus. I think that's something similar we're gonna have to do here. Let's start thinking this through. We need an if statement, so let's put an if statement there. And what would we have to do? We have to check to see if it is equal to five. That means in our test array, if one of the current indexes is equal to five, this is just code from my last lesson, nothing new. Our little error here is just saying we don't need this parenthesis here. We can get rid of it. If test array equal to five, we want to do something to our variable. What do we want to do towards it? When our test array is equal to five, we want to add to our variable. That, just like our num heads, I think we can just do five count plus plus semicolon. That means if test array in the index has a five, then we should add one to our five count. If we look down here, after that, it should display whatever five count is up here. That means every time we hit a five, it'll add one here. 
and then we should get that displayed down there. This will run 10 times. That sounds like it should work. Let's see if it actually does. We hit run, original number, no fives, number fives, and none. So it works when there's nothing. Nothing again. This time we have two fives and two fives there. Let's try again. Just one. Looks like our code's working pretty good here. Let's try to change it to 100 real quick to see how many fives we get. Where are we going to change it? Well, we want to change the number of items we add to the array. That means right now we're adding 10. If we add one more zero, it should run 100. Let's reset run. We printed out this real long number here, and it looks out of 100, we only got four fives. That is not very many fives at all out of 100. Let's reset run. We got 11 this time, 10, 11. Looks like the average is somewhere there around 7 to 11 there. Not many are coming up. Let's see if we can go to 1,000. 111, we can. Looks like there's a thousand numbers printed out there. One more time, reset run, 99. We'll stop right there. Looking back up here to our do this, we added an if statement inside the for loop that checks to see if the number inside the index is five. This was exactly like the last lesson. What we did then was we created a line of code that add one to the variable that they provided to us. Then we called that variable to display out to see how many times we got the number five. Finally, we changed it to run a thousand times. Let's change it back to 10. We are using this in the future. Not only we change it to 100, we change it to 1,000, which gave us 99. When we ran it 100 times, it was usually somewhere around 10. Very interesting. I think that's all code.org wanted from us. Let's see if they want anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. I'll see you on the next lesson.